It is the Easter holiday edition of the Sports News. Welcome on in. No headlines, just more and more interviews. We're going to be talking baseball, Mad Roland Dolls, and Rubbin because Rubbin is racing, of course. And it's all powered by the Red Zone over on Regent Street and Conant Automotive in Stoughton. The Sports News coming up next right here on 57 Sports. Welcome back to the Sports News. With me now, we have Bob DeMars. He's the director of the Business of Amateurs. Bob, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Ellen. Thanks for having me on the show. So excited to have you. This is a documentary that's about college athletes' rights, and I'm excited to explore this a little bit more, but what brought about making this documentary for you? You know, about five or six years after I started playing football, I had a lot of injuries that were lingering. You know, I had lost ligaments in both my knees. Uh, one while I was blocking a kick at Oregon, which was uh, maybe worth it, I don't know. Uh, and I started having some of these injuries come back and I kept thinking, you know, well, my injuries one day outweigh the benefit of my education. Is it gonna cost me more in the long run? And there was a guy named Scott Ross, who's the linebacker next to Junior Seau at USC. And my roommate asked if his buddy could crash on the couch for a while. That guy was Scott Ross. That while turned into seven months. He had just lost his job at the age of 39. He was diagnosed with dementia and his life was spiraling out of control. And I started looking at it a little bit differently because people say my injuries, you know what, you signed up for that. But when it came to the head injuries, I don't think that any of us signed up for that. And some of the long-term aspects can be um, detrimental and in some cases deadly. Absolutely. And now you mentioned that you did play at USC and this kind of leads into my next question. Did you feel like an athlete student or a student athlete? That's a good question. You know, uh, look, I, I was an academic person in high school. I had 4.0, I had high test scores, and I had some really good college options, including uh, Stanford and Harvard. And, and I chose USC because I wanted to study business as an undergrad, and I wanted to, their film school is the best in the world. Uh, and there were times I, I definitely felt like an athlete student. I had a coach named Ed Ogeron, who's now the head coach at LSU, and he used to cuss me out when I had to leave practice 10 minutes early in the spring to go to a class that was required, that if I was late, I dropped a whole grade point. So these coaches are hired to win. They're not, you know, it's not about an education or graduation, it's about eligibility. Um, they care about keeping people on the field. And I very much felt like I always had to put sports before school. Right, and now in your opinion, do you think athletes should be paid? You know, that's the question that a lot of people talk about. The reality is they already are paid. They're paid in the form of a scholarship. Um, but the reality also is that the average scholarship's worth about $27,000 a year. The average football player is worth $150,000 a year. The average basketball player is worth a quarter of a million dollars. At Texas, the average football player is worth $650,000 a year. Now, where does that money go? That money goes to the coach. Now, I think that players should make money off their likeness. Um, that would balance the system out. I mean, right now, the NCAA was founded for the to prevent commercial exploitation. What they really mean is to prevent others from exploiting the talent that they're commercially exploiting. So in any other walk of life, you can get your true value. I think athletes, if they could trade on their value and their name in that little interim where they actually have that value, I think that's fair. That's a really interesting point and probably a perspective that a lot of people maybe haven't thought of before because maybe they weren't student athletes. And kind of going back to when you played at USC as well, I know you mentioned some lingering issues and injuries that you still have. Is that still affecting you today? Yeah, uh, you know, I just had knee surgery about eight months ago. Uh, I was putting my baby into her pillow and a ligament snapped. And because I didn't have a PCL ligament, it was never repaired. It put strain on all my other ligaments. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if I should have blocked that kick at Oregon. Uh, my right knee is gonna, the same thing's gonna happen at some point. And uh, the reality is, is the long-term uh, mental aspects, I was diagnosed with panic disorder uh, about three years ago, actually when I was in the middle of making the film. And these are some of the long-term repercussions of not that it's just, just concussions, but sub-concussive blows. And panic disorder, it's a misnomer. It sounds like, oh, I, I, I panic. But what it is, it's a malfunction of the brain. And I've had dozens of people from across the country since the Business of Amateurs came out and reached out to me and said, I'm not alone, or I have what you have. Um, six of my teammates from just when I was playing at USC 
um, have come and whispered that in my ear. And it's difficult for athletes that are prideful in nature to admit that there's a deficiency that most people misassume as your identity. So, um, you know, when people say you signed up for that, I really don't feel, my knees, I, yeah, this is a violent sport. Um, the long-term mental aspects, uh, which can be Parkinson's for some people, or ALS, um, or, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, I don't think we signed up for that. So with your experiences now, now that you're no longer a player, how do you feel looking back about the school at USC? That's the weird thing. You know, I still love my school. I'm, I'm proud of being a Trojan. And that was the mixed emotions that came with making this film. How do I show all these things about student athletes rights and the things that they deserve, but I still love my school. And I think that ambivalence is growing pains. But one of the things I ask every athlete when I interviewed them, the only thing I could think about is, all right, how did you feel about your school? And every athlete said, I love my school. And Aurora from Berkeley, she said, she put it best. She said, you know, this is what we do with things that we care about and things that we love is we push them to be better. And that's really what this film is. I love that. And that is a great point because we can all grow and, and get better. Absolutely. Right. We and do with our friendships and our family. You know, we push things that we care about around us to be better. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what this film uh, perspective comes from. A part of life. And quick before we go here, would you play college football now knowing everything that you do know now? You know, I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to have a son one day and, you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure that my son doesn't play football. I think youth football should be outlawed. Kids' necks aren't strong enough, so their heads go back further and um, their brains are still developing and forming. The only reason I would make this, the, I, I would do it all again for the purpose of making this film, to let guys out there know that they're not alone um, and to be a part of the positive zeitgeist and the movement that we're in right now. But if it wasn't for this documentary, I, I wouldn't do it again. I'd, I'd rather have uh, student loan debt, actually, as crazy as that sounds. Bob DeMars, he's the director of The Business of Amateurs. You can find more information at thebusinessofamateurs.com. Thank you so much for being with us Thank today. Thank you for we having appreciate me on the show. It. And we'll be back with more sports news right after this. Baseball season is in full swing. Yeah, I know, it's a terrible pun. But at least we get to talk some baseball amongst all this good weather and stuff. So it's good stuff as we talk with the Spartans from Memorial. We have head coach Tim Richardson, along with Isaac Blum, Searing Dorji, Billy Wilson. They're the captains of the team. And welcome on in, fellas and coach. We will start with you. Let's talk about the early season. How have the first few games gone so far? Uh, the games have been exciting. We have uh, two walk-off wins so far uh, this season. We have a total of three wins uh, and one loss. We lost uh, two nights ago to Verona. Uh, we play the fallout coming up, but so far, so good. I talked to some of those Verona guys. They seemed like they were pretty focused, so that's a, that's a pretty good matchup right there. So what's the outlook then for the Big 8 Conference and then further on down the road if you're looking ahead to the WIAA Tournament? Uh, historically, the Big 8 Conference is a very tough conference. Uh, we always have two or three teams represented at state, so the conference play will be difficult. Um, it will be a good test for us going into the tournament. It will get us ready for the tournament. Um, and I think the top teams are probably Janesville, Craig, and Sun Prairie. And then if you look across the state, uh, Kenosha Indian Trail is going to be tough to beat this year. Absolutely. And everyone's familiar with the recent success of Craig and Sun Prairie. So you are definitely in a very tough conference. Guys, let's turn to you right now. So playing varsity baseball, and you guys are seniors, you made it that far. How is it different, though, from playing youth baseball when you used to play that or club baseball? Well, high school ball is more team oriented. We practice every day and we all put in the work to succeed. As like travel baseball, it's kind of an individual thing. You're there to try to impress college scouts and hopefully get to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and so much focus, you know, on at least winning those games too at the varsity level. All of them count, so that's that's a big deal. Uh, as far as the style of play, some baseball teams like to be hit and run, fast teams. They play good defense and pitching. What style of play do you think would define Memorial Baseball? Uh, I believe we're definitely a scrappy team and aggressive, and our attitude is always to get that extra base. Nice, yeah. You know, sometimes in baseball they use the word dirtbag. Is that that's a good thing? So <laughs> you gotta like that. So as you guys are seniors, you're playing in your last season. What advice would you give to aspiring young high school athletes? Uh, I think I tell them that you only get high school one time and take advantage of these opportunities. And baseball is a great sport. Playing with your friends every day and. Uh, you only get one shot at it, so make it count. Absolutely. Fellas, we're going to go around one time. Best baseball movie ever. What do you think it is? He's going to go first. I'm going to go first. You go first. Uh, Bull Durham. Bull Durham, good one. 
I have to go with uh, For the Love of the Game. Nice. I'd say so. Bench warmers for sure. Wow, and not <laughs> one person said Major League, my all-time favorite. So, <laughs> good stuff. Fellas, thank you so much for being here. Good luck. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. Baseball season is upon us. They are playing everywhere. In college, they've been playing for like two months already. Major League Baseball's gotten underway, and they have in high school as well as we bring in some of the players on the Verona team as Jared, Tyler, and Jeff are joining us now on the Sports News. And welcome on in, fellas. You guys are fresh off a marathon battle against Janesville Parker. 16-inning game. What was it like to be a part of something like that? Oh, it was crazy. Um, the funny part about the game is Janesville, Craig, and Madison LaFollette played after us. So they started at like 10 o'clock. Um, so it was crazy. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, going through that game was just wild. I mean, 16 innings, it's, it's insane. The, the best part about, I think, if you're going to play in a 16-inning game is to at least get the win, as you guys <laughs> yeah. were able to do that. So have you ever been a part of anything, you know, on any level that was a game that long? Maybe even, like, video game baseball? Anything <laughs> uh, that's ever been that long? You ever been a part of that? I mean, I have personally. My JV season, when I was a freshman, we went 16 innings. And, like, and when I was on JV, I just wanted the game to be over. But, like... This was like varsity, so obviously we wanted to win. Um, but it was special, yeah. It was something I'll remember for a long time. Absolutely. So as you guys move on in this season, what do you think some of the keys are if you guys are going to have a successful season? Yeah, so uh, some keys that we'll need to work on is uh, hitting especially. we got to do a little bit better job at hitting the ball and just putting the ball in play. Um, you know, we got some good pitching, so uh, that – really helps we got a lot of deep uh, we got a good defense we got a deep pitching staff that we can focus on and hopefully take us far into some games yeah sometimes early on in the season when it's cold here in Wisconsin hitting can be an issue it's tough but you guys are off to a 3-0 and start what are some of the reasons for that um, yeah so uh, just a good attitude in the dugout just working hard Everyone keeping everyone focused on the bench and just make sure everyone stays in the game. Yeah, you got to be focused on that. So we talk about the areas that you need to improve upon. What do you think that you guys need to work on to get better this season? Um, really, I think our main area, as we can all agree as a team, is our hitting. Um, that's really been probably the place we struggle the most on. Obviously, our pitching and um, defense have been really excellent so far, but if we can really get our hitting as a team average up, we're going to be a really successful team that can probably take us deep into a playoff run. Yeah, I bet you as it warms up, the bats will warm up as well. So about 15 seconds left. Goals for this 2017 season. Where do you set the bar? What are your goals this season? Um, well, last year, I mean, we made it to, we had one game before we went to the state playoffs, and I think that's the um, step we want to overcome. I mean, it was really close, came down to the wire, and I think for us seniors, because we're all three seniors, I think that'd be one area we'd like to get over like get over that hump and make it into the playoffs. That would be nice and in a very tough conference with Janesville, Craig, Sun Prairie, Middleton, some good ball being played in the Big A Conference. Fellas, thanks for being on. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us. Appreciate it. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. All right, we welcome in a couple ladies now from the Mad Roland Dolls and we got a veteran of this show in Ginger Snap and a newbie in Lady Hoo-Ha. And welcome on in, ladies, and let's talk April 29th. It is the last event of the season. What's all going on that Saturday night? Yeah, so we're really excited. It's going to be a triple header this time around. And like you mentioned, our championship bout. So we're gonna start off with our Rexpo game, which is going to be the Rumblebees versus the Black and Bluebirds. Uh, next up, we'll have our grudge match for third place, which is going to be the Unholy Rollers versus the Reservoir Dolls. Uh, and then the much anticipated championship bout, uh, which will have our defending champions, the Quad Squads, playing against the Vaudeville Vixens. Uh, we'll wrap it up with an after party at Five Night Club. Very cool. Now tell us a little bit more, if you could, you mentioned the word Rexpo. What's that? Who are the Wreckers? The Wreckers are the rec league that started in 2010. I was part of the first league. 
of the Wreckers. It is a great place to start if you want to join MRD, and it is also a great place to stay if you don't want the intensity of MRD that it is a great place to stay. Hey, you got to start somewhere, and yeah. so, yeah, cool stuff. So now, uh, you guys are playing against each other, I think, for that, that third place match right yeah. there. Yes, so, we are. Yeah, how are you preparing for that? Is there any animosity? Uh, a little bit of that. You guys seem to like each other. <laughs> right now. We do. <laughs> yeah, on the track it's different, but yeah, uh, the Unholy Rollers have been preparing Basically just doing what we always do, playing hard. Um, I'm really excited. Both of our teams had a pretty big uh, draft class of rookies and it's amazing to see the progress they've made this season. So I'm excited for them to get to go out and strut their stuff. Now for the finale and the championship match, now last year Quad Squad won it. They won it in the last few seconds. What are you guys expecting in this matchup? Who do you think is gonna win it? Ooh, I think it's going to be tight again this year, too. Yeah. They are both very strong teams. They both have a lot of vets on there. And uh, I think it's hard to determine who's going to win. Mm. Very cool. Now, as far as the championship goes, over the six years, has it been dominated by one team or has there been a mix of teams? What's been the, the lineage of that and the history behind it? Well, the Reservoir Dolls have taken the lead most of the time. They have won the championship six times out of 12. Okay, all right, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a pretty good run. And then once it's over, what do you guys do for the summer? What, what happens in the off season for you? Yeah, so a lot of us will continue skating. Uh, we do have a uh, travel team, the Dairyland Dolls, uh, and they continue competing throughout the summer at various tournaments. Uh, we also run a summer boot camp. So for folks that are still newer to roller derby, um, taking the advantage of that to share our skills. Uh, and then just resting our bodies and preparing for next year. Excellent stuff. Ladies, thank you for joining us. Hopefully everyone will come out and see you April the 29th. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. Welcome back to the sports news with me now. I have Natalie Decker. People are calling her the next Danica Patrick. She's a race car driver. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to have you here. I want to give folks a little bit of a background on you. You're from Eagle River and you're only 19 years old. That makes you one of the youngest race car drivers professionally, let alone you're one of the very few women who are racing on a professional level. Such a huge accomplishment, I have to say. And you've got some other really exciting news. You just signed with Venturini Motorsports, one of the best ARCA teams. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's super exciting. I just signed with Venturini Motorsports with N29 Capital Partners sponsoring me. Mm -hmm. And my crew chief back home with my super late program helped out a lot because he worked with Venturini Motorsports. And it's a great deal, I'm super excited. That's awesome. And you're gonna be pretty busy this summer, it sounds like, you're doing a lot of racing. Where are you gonna be? Yeah, we're gonna be doing about 30 races with our super late program and then three races with Ventrini Motorsports, and that will be in Toledo, Elko, and Pocono. Wonderful, and you've got one coming up, it sounds like, in Madison as well. Yep, that will be with my super late program with Kyle Willisek is the, is the crew chief, and he also spots for me, so. Perfect. Yeah. And really, it sounds like a lot has changed for you recently with all of the different sponsorships and becoming part of the Venturini team. Who is helping you get to that next level? My parents definitely helped me through everything yeah. ever since I started racing. And then, like I said, Kyle, we brought him on this year and he helped. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be where we are. And also with N29, they are the ones who are making it happen. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned a couple different racing teams. What's different about your race team, Natalie Decker Racing and Venturini Motorsports? Well, Venturini Motorsports is um, an ARCA team and they're one of the best and that will be traveling all over, kind of following the NASCAR circuit. And then my super late program is just back in Wisconsin, more so the Midwest, and that's more just a local thing. I love it, you gotta show love to the hometowns, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and now you're only 19 years old. I can't even imagine your future is so bright. What does your career path look like in the next few years? Well, hopefully in the next few years, I'll be at the top level in NASCAR. That's been my goal wow. ever since I started racing at nine years old. Absolutely amazing. And you're definitely on the right track, will I say, to get there for sure. And how can more people find out about your teams? We have a website, nataliedeckerinc.com, and I also have a Facebook, Natalie Decker, 
Instagram, Twitter, you can follow me on all the social medias. And so now Natalie, like I mentioned, 19 years old, one of the only women who are racing professionally at this level. What is it like being a part of a sport being a woman? It's great actually. Yeah. I've learned a lot because I've been doing it since I was nine years old and there's the ups and downs of being a girl, but I've learned how to gain respect Yeah, and that is the biggest thing. Absolutely, and the best thing you can do is win those races, right? Oh yeah, that is, that is the best way to get everyone's respect really fast. Absolutely, and you've certainly done that. And now preparing for all of these different races, what do you do to prepare and, and really train? Well, I try to work out every day, and it's really working out and hydrating a lot before sure. a race. And then mentally, I kind of get in my car a little earlier and strap in, have my dad or Kyle get my belt real tight, and then I just kind of sit in there and focus. Is there a lot of driving beforehand when you train for these races and possibly different tracks? Yeah, we'll go and test a few times um, here and there, try new things. But other than that, you show up the day of the race and they may only give you 20, 30 minutes to practice. Wow. What's going through your mind before every race starts when you're about to go? That is the hardest thing to explain. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, usually trying to make sure my hands are right on the steering wheel. That's good. <laughs> before the green flag goes. Uh, and whatever my spotter is usually telling me is what's going through my mind. That's perfect. And now I also want to mention again, when you are going to be in the area, May 28th, you're going to be at Bratfest. And it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun for people to come visit you. What are you all are you guys going to have? Yeah, we're going to have a race car there. It's going to be after a race, so hopefully it's not torn up or anything. <laughs> um, but it's going to be great. I want everyone to come out, take pictures, get autographs. And they can even sit in the car? Yeah, well, if you're smaller than me or my size, you can definitely fit in there. Otherwise, probably not. Perfect. And again, <laughs> Natalie, where can people follow you if they want to stay up to date on everything that's happening in your life? You can follow me on NatalieDeckerInc.com. Wonderful. Again, Natalie Decker, thank you so much for being with us and can't wait to see what you do. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And we'll be back with more sports news right here on Wisconsin's 57 Television after this. Big thank you to all of our guests that made this show possible. Also, Ellen Barrett stepping in, knocking out an interview. Thanks, Ellen. And also to our sponsors, especially the Red Zone over on Regent Street and Conant Automotive down in Stoughton. And a big thank you for watching as well. I'm Rich Reynolds. We'll see you next time on the Sports News right here on Wisconsin's 57 Sports.